This hair is burnt. Hey guys, howdy and hello. Welcome back to my channel. My name's Mercy, which you should know by now. And the level of drama I have for you today is unreal. It's like Kardashian level. Like I said, the drama is unreal. Just like the tea here in the South. And also the church ladies that say, bless your heart. That is not a compliment. Last time we were together, we went stomping through the Blythe Wood by Carol Goodman looking for lamp sprites. We were not successful. Today, we're putting back on a school uniform so that we can attend Hikat Hall, or Hex Hall for short. The premier reformatory institution for prodigium adolescents. Is that how you say that word? Prodigium. Okay, there we go. X Hall is the first in the Tetrad. Tetralogy. Quartet, if you will. Would have been cool if I had a fourth word for that, right? Followed by Demon Glass, Spellbound, and then School Spirits. I've actually read the entire series, with the exception of Spirit Bound, because it is a novella, and you guys know how I feel about novellas. Let's jump into it. Our story starts off with Sophie, the bleeding heart that she is, trying to help a girl at senior year prom. She finds a girl crying in the bathroom, and Sophie, being the kind girl that she is, decides, hey, let me perform a love spell for you. Love potion However, it outrageously backfires and ends up with the girl revealing to the entire school population that Sophie is indeed a witch yet again. Did I mention that this similar situation has already happened 19 times before? As a result, the Council of Prodigium sentences her to Hakat Hall, where she is to remain until she turns 18 in two years. All within her first week, she's attacked by a werewolf, roomed up with a vampire, mocked by the hottest guy in school, and has made enemies of the resident mean girls. As Sophia begins to learn about herself and her past, she starts to uncover dark secrets, and she's going to need some help if she's going to make it through the semester. Sophia Mercer. Sophie is a half-human, half-witch of the dark world. Or so she thinks until her great-grandmother shows up, surprise, it's me, your ghosty relation, and starts sacrificing powerful witches. She has trouble with self-confidence, which in turn affects her powers, but she adores her best friend Jenny. Though she does doubt her at the most inopportune times, she's also in love with Archer Cross, the guy that pledged his life to kill all prodigium. Nothing wrong there. Archer Cross. Speak of the devil. Archer Cross is a stupid name. Like, Archer? Fine. But Cross? As in crossbow? And not that it's in this book, but I would swear that that's his tool of choice, his weapon of choice. At first he seems like a total tool to Sophie, but really I just think that's more of her perception about having to go to Hex Hall, similar to the casts that are spell on the inside of the house for all of the main and shared locations. When Sophie first arrives at the school, everything looks all ancient and dusted and moldy, but as she spends more time there, she's like, oh, when did you get new furniture? Which is how the perception spell comes about. How you feel about the school is reflected in what you see, so it's all about your perception. He really is a stand-up guy, and he's not really explored in this book, but that's what series are for. I am 100% Team Archer, even though he has a silly name. Jennifer Tabled. Towel? Tabit? I don't know. Look, all these letters that are silent that shouldn't be, I don't know what to tell you. She's Sophie's roommate, and she's also the school's only resident vampire, aside from Lord Byron. Yes, that Lord Byron. But he's a teacher, so he doesn't count. Typically bright and bubbly, she's obsessed with the color pink and not what you would stereotypically think when you think vampire. She is maybe more true blood than Twilight as far as appearance. But then also if true blood were like able to be shown on Nickelodeon. Oh, um, Marcy, Marceline from, uh, Adventure Time. That's that's what we're working with here. Except blonde and obsessed with pink. I feel really bad for her. She's treated like a pariah and she's blamed for everything bad that happened at the school. And she never even wanted to be a vampire in the first place. Elodie Paris is a dark ami witch and resident mean girl. She terrorizes Jennifer and blames her for the death 
of Jennifer's ex-roommate slash Elodie's former coven mate. When in actuality, Elodie and her two minions are the reason that Holly, the ex-best friend, former coven mate, was used as a blood sacrifice and died to begin with. They were trying to raise a demon. And then it didn't even work correctly. Some characters, you don't feel bad for their deaths, but this is not one of them. I feel like Rachel Hawkins tried to redeem Elodie towards the end of the book, but it just didn't work. Elodie just ended up getting her dress desserts. Poetic justice for selfish, vain little Elodie. James Arthurton. Did I mention that Sophie is a quarter demon? No? Are we sure? Yeah, well, she is. And her dad is half demon. Imagine that. He's also head of the Council of Prodigium and the reason she's at Hex Hall to begin with. Dad's gotta love him. He doesn't have much interaction with Sophie because he pissed off her mom. I mean, if you were dating somebody and then a year into the relationship, they were like, Hey, not only am I magical, but I'm half a demon. I, I wouldn't talk to you either. Sophie's mom found out she was pregnant afterwards, and so then she begrudgingly allowed like phone calls, but they've never met in person. However, Sophie's mom has made it very clear that James cares for Sophie immensely. You learn more about their relationship in a book two. Advice. Everything is not always as it seems. As we discussed, a lot of uh, Sophie's problem was her perception, how she was perceiving the things at Hex Hall. Learn to use your gut and trust your intuition. Basically do the opposite of what Sophie did. Sophie knew that she shouldn't have been hanging out with Lucy, there was something off about her, but she ignored it and continued. And then guess what? Bam! Your great grandma is a blood drinking demon freak. So. Too. Everyone is not always out to get you. I mean, most people, places, and things are. But you'll never know until you give it a go. Just like the perception spells inside the halls of Hakate. Of Hakate 3. Do your research. Didn't we go over this with Glimmer Glass? When you don't know your dad, and you're of magical lineage, he's always high-ranking in government. Always. Jeez. Like, so you guys are trying to get kidnapped. I mean. 4. Look, your parents should have told you this way back when, way back when the first scary movie that ever appeared across your little eyeballs happened. Do not play with Ouija boards. I feel like that's common sense, but just like the people that try to raise demons, those are the same people playing with the Ouija board. You know your friend? That was like, oh hey, let's uh, jump off of this cliff, it's not that high. Yeah, he's playing with Ouija boards. People that raise demons or think that the concept is cool. For the same ones messing with Ouija boards, inviting weird sh** into your house, you don't even know what it is. Miss me with that. I am a child of God. Today, I will leave you with this. I can't do the song justice, so I'm just going to leave it right here for you. I am the shadow on the moon at night, filling your dreams to the brim with fright. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Hex Hall is interesting because I don't like to read stuff with demons because that gives me like paranormal activity. It scares the living shit out of me. I will watch anything except for paranormal activity. I've seen, I think, two of those movies and I'm not sure how, I, like I barely recovered. And then one of them has a creepy kid. You cannot trust children. Children are not to be trusted, especially if they have a doll, if there's a doll around, if the kid turns into the doll, if the doll turns into the kid. Don't trust kids. If the kids start speaking to themselves, no. Hex Hall is an awesome series and I definitely recommend you guys check it out when you get the chance. It's a lot darker than some books that I read. And I forgot about that. I think it's up there with The Wicked Deep and uh, there's this other book. I cannot remember the name of this book but it scared the hell out of me. Uh, it has a green cover. I will put a picture of it. Uh, somewhere around here but those two books are really freaky and have sacrifices in them and so does this one so if you're looking for something with sacrifices for spooky season i recommend one of these three books if you like this video be sure to like this video leave a comment down below so we can get to know each other don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you know when i upload and i will see you precious little strudels in the next one.